Random forests are very similar to bagging. If you recall in the last video, we've talked about bagging and bagging was uh, the process where we bootstrap our original sample, we create all these bootstrap samples and it, for each sample uh, we feed a, a, a tree, we grow a tree and then to get predictions, we get predictions from each one of the trees built on the bootstrap samples and we average all those predictions and this is uh, the predictions from the bagged trees. Okay. Uh, the issue with, the, with this process is that uh, bootstrap trees tend to be highly correlated and the random, uh, the random forest is just a tweak that uses a clever trick to uh, uncorrelate the trees. So rather than um, using all the predictors, so the idea is the following. Uh, when growing the, the trees in each bootstrap samples, Rather, the, that rather than evaluating the entire set of predictor, predictors at each node to decide on the split, we're just going to evaluate um, a smaller number of randomly selected predictors. So let's see this in a, in a figure. As um, we mentioned before, the idea of uh, uh, bagging is to bootstrap the original sample, create a bootstrap sample or multiple bootstrap samples, and each sample uh, grow the trees okay so suppose that we have um, p predictors when growing the trees what we do at each node is to evaluate the the p predictors and see which one and uh, it's uh, is best to uh, split to make the split and, of, and also the the cutoff associated with that predictor but at each node we always evaluate the p predictors so what random forest uh, proposes is that in, rather than evaluating the p predictors we're going to evaluate a smaller number of predictors randomly chosen from the the the, the overall set so in this case we're going to select three predictors it's just an, as an example three predictors out of the to the three predictors uh, to decide which one is going to be chosen for the the split and then on next on the next node we again choose three predictors out, out of the p predictors for the, uh, the split in the next node and so on. Okay, so this small trick uh, that evaluates not the entire set of predictors at each node but a smaller uh, subset um, uncorrelates the trees and makes the, 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 the predictions even more stable. So how many, uh, how many uh, predictors should we evaluate at each node? Well, from simulation study, the recommendation, although this you know, can, can be set um, by the, the user, but the recommendation is for, re, uh, for regression problems, so when, when the outcome is continuous, um, a good value to choose is the number of variables divided by three, by three, okay, approximately, obviously. And for classification problems uh, is the square root of P. Of, of P. Okay, so we can either set uh, these values or we can actually uh, run cross validation to choose um, to choose the the the, the number of uh, um, predictors that will be evaluated that is split, and see which one minimizes the mean square error or minimizes the ROC curve. So here is a random forest fitted with the carrot package. Um, so the difference between what we've done here and with what we've done with bagging is that uh, we're going to uh, um, fix the method to be random forest. In this case, because I didn't fix the number of uh, um, the number of uh, uh, predictors to be evaluated at each node, right? That in this case would be one, two, three, four, five. So five divided by by three. So I could select between two and three. Um, variables uh, but actually I'm uh, letting the carrot uh, do cross validation and see which one is to be selected in this case it's going to be two uh, predictors randomly selected from the, the set of five predictors that gives it the smallest uh, uh, mean square error and finally I have here the comparison with um, uh, the linear model and as you can see in this specific example, the R square or the root, means, uh, the root mean square error 
of the random forest and the linear predictor, predictor is actually very, very similar. Okay, so a little bit smaller with the random forest, but it's a really small uh, improvement. So basically, this is these are uh, the random forests. The last thing that I, I'll briefly mention, because it's uh, in the book, although we're not really going to to cover it, is the the boosting, uh, the bo boosting idea, uh, and you know, boosting can be applied to trees, but can also be applied to any uh, any other uh, algorithm for prediction. So the idea is that we can we can have a me method that uh, makes predictions. We get predictions, and those predictions, some of them are not going to be correct. So we're going to have residuals, if you want, of mis misclassifications. And then I can fit um, an, or can use uh, another tree to try to uh, fit those residuals or those, those misclassifications. Okay, and I'll do that, and then again I'll have some uh, other misclassifications, and then I'm, then add, and can add another tree, uh, and another tree, and another tree to the uh, residuals, so the misclassifications at the end of each tree. Okay, so this this will use multiple trees, or can be generalized to other um, algorithms, uh, and even mix mixture of algorithms. So we could start, for example, with a linear model and then fit a tree for in the residuals and so on. So it uses these uh, sequential uh, methods to refine uh, the, the fitting, the prediction, uh, using the, the, the residuals. So this, again, we're not going to cover in, in the course, but it's just to give you an idea about what's happening with boosting.